Good afternoon. Welcome to the Ludlow College Virtual Open Event. In this session, we're going to be looking at the sports and business courses available at the college. So we've got a short video just to show you, just to introduce you to the courses, and then the tutors are on hand to answer any questions that you may have. So sit back and enjoy the video and think up of your questions. Hello, my name is Carl Morris and I'm head of Ludlow College. I would like to welcome you to our virtual open event. I thought I would start by explaining why you should consider coming to Ludlow College for your post-16 education. We have an excellent track record for academic performance, for A-levels and vocational courses. Presently, we are ranked very highly on the national achievement tables. Virtually all of our students achieve their courses with on average 99.3% of our A-level students passing their course over the past five years. 100% of our vocational students have passed their course over the last three years, with all our students gaining a positive career outcome, whether that is going to university, a job or an apprenticeship. Our timetable is very different to other colleges. The average student comes into college for three and a half days per week, therefore giving students freedom for part-time jobs, work experience, and limiting their travel to college time. We have excellent facilities with new science labs, a fitness suite, art and health and social care rooms, specialist rooms for media and dark rooms for photography, to name a few. Our curriculum is very broad with 27 different A-levels, four level three vocational courses in sport, health and social care, early years and business, two level two vocational courses in health and social care and early years combined and business. If you're interested in a career in football, please have a look into our football education programme, which is run in conjunction with Shrewsbury Town Football Club. All students have the opportunity to take part in one of our enrichment activities, such as drama, sports teams, high achievers programme, art academy, to name a few. If you have any questions, please take the opportunity to speak to the teachers during this event. Staff will be available to discuss transport and finance queries as well. I would just like to end by saying thank you for attending this event. And if you have not done so already, you can make an application to the college. This is done via our website. And once you've completed an application form, we will give you a telephone call to discuss your career options and your course options. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Ludlow College Sports Department. I just wanted to give you a bit of an introduction as to who we are and what courses we offer within the department um, and what other sort of services we have. So uh, my name is Gavin Price. I teach A-level PE, BTEC Sport and I'm involved in the enrichment programme, so that's our fixtures. Uh, I've been working at the college for over five years now, but I've also been working within the leisure industry ever since I was uh, 16 years old. And I went off to university uh, to study sport health and exercise science. So there is um, an element of expertise, hopefully, within what I'm teaching you and passing on that knowledge. We have Stephanie Hustwaite, who um, has also studied sport ever since the age of 16, um, who teaches BTEC sport. And finally, we have Sophie Broom, who's our sport technician, who does a lot of work with our coaching groups um, and also runs a disability coaching group, which you're able to get involved with. So we're all passionate about sport and we're all passionate about a wide range of sports, not just one or two sports here and there. So we should be able to, um, and we sort of um, embed that into our lessons as well. So you won't just be looking at one sport throughout the whole of your two years with us. We will look at lots of different sports and analyze how that works within the courses. In terms of class sizes, um, we have uh, this year seven in the A-level PE group, so quite a small group, but that's which is quite good because that means you get more contact time with myself. In BTEC sport, the group is slightly larger. It's between 15 and 20, depending on which pathway um, students are on this year, but that's probably smaller than you're used to at school level. And our coaching group is around the 10 to 15 mark as well. We have a 100% pass rate on all of our courses um, over the past five years. Um, so, you know, we do we do get the good good grades as, as well from our courses. In terms of entry requirements for BTEC Sport and A Level PE, both the same. We like to have five uh, good GCSE grades at level four or grade C and above, preferably with those being in maths, English, and science and GCSEP is going to benefit as well. 
However, GCSE PE is not a prerequisite for either of the courses. You don't have to have studied GCSE PE in order to access the course. Beat Export and A-Level PE carry UCAS points, so that um, is, is a way starting into university level. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through A-Level PE and Steph will talk you through um, Beat Export and the coaching options. Hi, I'm Steph. I'm a teacher of BTEC Sport and I'm going to talk to you about the BTEC Sport course that we offer here at Ludlow College. The course itself is a two year full time course offering a wide variety of units throughout the two years. Some examples of these units that you'd be studying are careers within the sport industry, sports coaching skills, nutrition, and sports psychology. And due to the wide range of topics within this course, it opens you up to quite a few careers in the future. Some examples of this would be coaching, PE teacher or sports psychologist. The course is made up of 100% coursework, which is really beneficial because you know the grade that you are working at throughout the year. The timetable that you would be studying is over three days. Monday and Tuesday are full days. Wednesday is a half day, with the afternoon then being um, for enrichment activities, which is optional, and when the fixtures and the training would take place. When looking at our pass rate, since 2015 we have had 100% pass rate. Alongside the BTEC Sport course, we offer the FA Award, which is a one year programme and it's delivered by Shrewsbury Town Football Club. The content of this is an FA Level 1 coaching, Sports Activator course, and um, throughout that you will gain lots of really, really good experience within that coaching sport industry. You will gain a DBS certificate, an emergency first aid certificate, and it will give you the opportunity for bespoke work experience within a professional club. The enrichment activities that we offer here at Ludlow College are very student-led and this will vary each year depending on the popularity of the sports. But to give you some examples of sports that we regularly do, we're looking at football, netball, rugby, hockey. In the summer we play rounders, badminton, tennis and cricket. The two competitive sports that we have within leagues are football and netball and for both of those sports we have two teams entered competing in the league. The sports facilities that we have at the college site are the sports hall and a 15 station fitness suite which is accessible for students to use during and after college and we have a wide range of links with the local clubs which is really beneficial for the students to enhance their development within the sports. I'm going to talk to you about A-Level PE now, if you didn't quite catch our sport introductions earlier. My name is Gavin Price and I've been teaching at the college for over five years, but I've been involved in the sport and leisure industry ever since I was 16 years of age. I went to university and studied sport, health and exercise science, which is going to be really beneficial to you studying A-Level PE because it is a lot more of a science-based qualification than perhaps the title PE conjures up in your mind. Uh, looking at how you've studied PE up until this point. So what I want to do is just talk you through how the assessment runs, uh, what sort of topics you'll be covering, and then other questions that I often get asked about A-level PE. So the course is split up into two major parts, one part being your exams, which is 70% of your overall A-level. Now, th those exams are split into three different parts. So you have one exam paper which is all about physiology, that's where you'll be looking at sport nutrition, biomechanics, sporting injuries, anatomy and physiology, amongst other things. Paper two is sports psychology and skill acquisition. Obviously psychology is really important within sport and we'll be delving into the depths of the mind when we're doing that one. And paper three is all about socio-cultural and ethical issues within sport. Um, so we'll be looking at things like Lance Armstrong, maybe considering why he did what he did. And then the remaining 30% is split up into two parts. One part is your practical elements. And that is in one sport. So you don't have to pick a multitude of sports, it's just one sport. So it might be that you take part in a sport that has events. Let's take swimming, for instance. So it might be that you need to do in your first year, I know, 100 IM and 100 meters backstroke. And that's up to you to pick, not me. 
Okay, so you, you select those events. But in your second year, it will be down to the one, one event. And then the remaining 15%, so the other half of this 30%, is this um, evaluation of performance. So you evaluate someone's sporting performance in whatever sport it is you want. It doesn't have to be the same that you did your practical sport in, but it, it absolutely can be if you would like to. And then you decide how you can improve that performance utilising all of the theory that you've, that you've learned. Now that's a controllable element, so we spend a lot of time making sure that we get that as, as, as good as we can. It is very much a classroom-based course, so there won't be much practical. And in terms of practical, I mean, we won't be out on the field playing rounders and, and cricket and everything. We'll be doing none of that. The most practical we get is if something's not quite working out, within the classroom, then we're very lucky that we have our own sports hall and fitness suite that we can just pop down and I can just demonstrate something if it's not quite working in a classroom um, setting. In terms of trips, we often take a trip over to Worcester University and get to play in their sports science labs. So we're able to do things that, that we can't physically do at the college. And it also gives you a bit of an appreciation as to what things are like at university. Which brings me on to where do our students progress? We go off into a huge range of things. It could be you look at sport nutrition, it could be going to psychology, it could be you go off and do uh, coaching, personal training, become a PE teacher perhaps. There are so many avenues that A-level PE opens up for you. It might be you don't go on and uh, work within the leisure industry or sporting industry uh, at all, of course. It's absolutely fine because you'll be studying two other A-levels alongside A-level PE, of course. So um, to give you an idea from our last year's group, uh, out of six of the A-level students who left last year, five of them went off to university. Of those five, three of them went and studied a sports science form of course. So we do have a lot of students that go off to university, but it doesn't mean that is necessarily the route that you wish to take. Our exams are uh, split, so we do A-level -le A exams, obviously in the second year where you've got three, and we do AS exams in the first year, and you'll do two of those. And finally, our lessons are on a Thursday and a Friday. So I can tell you that now with some confidence, they're on a Thursday and a Friday, so you can start to plan out your week. But if you ever have any questions about A-level PE, then please do get in touch with the college and um, I will make sure I get back to you. Hi, my name is Louise Powell and I teach BTEC Level 2 Business at Ludlow College. BTEC Business at Level 2 is a one-year course and excellent for those students who may not have got the entry requirements to start a Level 3 course straight away. Business is the basis to all employment, whether you are a secretary, lorry driver or nurse. The organisation behind every job is a business and ultimately they have to make money to succeed. If you complete this course successfully, it provides a gateway onto another Level 3 course, such as other BTECs or A-Levels or you could progress onto an apprenticeship or into employment. This course is very practical, allowing you to experience making money, dealing with customers and to see how business works behind the scenes. It is made up of 12 units, two of which are exam based, business finance and marketing. The remaining units are all assessments based where we use written reports, presentations, video and role play to show evidence of your knowledge and understanding. We integrate lots of trips and experiences to help students get a real feel for business, such as going up to Hobson's Brewery in Clibbury, when we are looking at units of promoting a brand and business enterprise. Hobson's are a very environmentally friendly business and have just been through a successful rebranding exercise changing their logo and their marketing merchandise. We visit Chester Zoo, which is run as a charity and is a very important organisation involved with the breeding and protection of various animals throughout the world. Their marketing and customer service are vital to ensure that visitors return and have a very memorable experience. We also visit Tesco's in Ludlow where students get customer service training first hand 
and have the opportunity to help staff monitor customer behaviour and staff efficiency. Alongside these visits, the Rotary Club from Ludlow talked to students about employability and how to be successful in a job interview. Students have a muck interview and have valuable feedback on how to improve and impress potential employers. In college, when covering personal selling and business support, students hold meetings and organise a grand raffle where the money raised can be split between a charity of their choice and the team building trip to Oakwood. This again is planned and organised all by the students who have to create all the required paperwork from risk assessments to consent forms, organising menus and then taking turns to be team leaders. The units covered in this course allow students to see how a business can be successful. In the finance unit we learn about cash flow, profit and loss accounts and look at break-even analysis. Other units cover product and brand promotion, marketing including website design, where students will also get the chance to create their own website for a business of their choice. Overall, this course allows students to build confidence and their self-belief, at the same time as learning invaluable life skills which can be used successfully in their future whichever direction they choose to go in. Thank you. Business is a fantastic subject to study at Level 3 and at Ludlow College we offer the option of doing this as either an A-Level or a B-Tech qualification. You might have already studied business at Level 2, either as a GCSE at school or as a Level 2 qualification at college. If so, you will already have a great level of business knowledge to bring with you to Level 3. But if you've never studied business before, don't worry, you will not be at any disadvantage. Both qualifications provide an overview of how to run a business successfully, but the main difference is that A-level business is highly focused on the theoretical knowledge. We study many models and theories that focus on the decisions business people need to make to achieve the business's objectives, such as how to lead people to achieve their best performance, how to market a product to the right customers and how to expand the business, potentially into international markets. This course also focuses heavily on numerical analysis of business performance, with a large number of formulas required to measure aspects such as labour productivity, profit margins and capacity utilisation. The BTEC qualification is broken down into modules which allows us to study a range of business topics in much more detail, such as recruitment and selection, managing a business event, and personal and business finance. This course allows for more practical application of the theory, for example, taking part in a mock job interview and planning and executing a business event in teams. This enables students to develop many transferable skills, such as researching, presenting, teamwork, and leadership. When it comes to assessment, the two courses are very different, so it's worth considering what might suit you better. A-level business is assessed through three exams at the end of the two-year programme. There is no coursework element. Your grade will be determined from these exams only. This is the reason why exam skills and applying the theory to many different business scenarios is so important at A-level. BTEC Business, on the other hand, is less exam heavy. Out of 13 modules over the two year course, four of these will be assessed through exams and the rest through tasks such as written reports, presentations and role plays. This means that most of the BTEC assessments can be completed and graded throughout the course, sometimes with the opportunity to have a second go if the criteria isn't achieved the first time. The exams are also focused on specific topics, so revision can be tailored to a much smaller amount of theory than when preparing for the A-level business exams. Due to the differences in subject content and assessment, the lessons also vary between A-level and BSET business. A-level lessons mainly revolve around theory in the classroom, but we also use the Learning Resource Centre for groups to research topics before presenting back to the class later. 
VTech Business allows for a much more balanced approach between classroom-based theory lessons and independent time for students to work on their assessments. The BTEC course also involves a number of trips to add value to the modules that we study. For example, visiting the City of Birmingham when studying retail and the local jewellers when studying business ethics. Despite the differences in the nature of these Level 3 business courses, the opportunities for progression afterwards are very similar. From our A-Level class last year, 34% went on to study at university and 66% pursued apprenticeships and employment. From the BTEC class last year, it was the other way around. We have seen our Level 3 business students go on to pursue a wide variety of business-related studies and careers, including accountancy, marketing, business management, agribusiness, international business, and some more niche careers, such as sports business management and fashion business and buying. Some students have family businesses which they have gone on to help with after learning more about the subject. Business is something that is all around us. It's in the news, on the television and on social media. It's current and it's important. Whatever you go on to do, you will either be working for someone else's business or for your own. So this is a great opportunity to learn about how to run a business well and how to navigate your way through external influences such as competition, the media and the government. These courses can get you to the same destination. You just need to consider which path will suit you best. OK, so hopefully that's given a good insight into the different courses available within the, the sport and business um, sections at Ludlow College. Uh, we've got our tutors on hand to answer any questions that you may have, although we have apparently lost Gavin, who's uh, one of the, the sport tutors that was just talking, so we might have to work around that. Um, Steph, if I can bring you in then um, and answer any questions uh, that you can. Uh, we've got some sport ones coming in. Um, Oops. Someone's asked, uh, which course is more practical, A-level PE or BTEC sport? Um, so the BTEC course is the more practical option. There isn't actually any practical elements to the A-level delivery at all. So um, throughout the BTEC course, there'll be a variety of units that will Im have practical part of it. So practical sport or practical team sport is, are a couple of examples of those units. Um, also, there's a number of coaching units. So that will be people taking part in the units themselves and also um, delivering the coaching element themselves. So the BTEC is is definitely the more practical option of the two. OK, brilliant. Um, so someone said, um, do I need to be good at sports to study A-level PE? I mean, presumably if there's no sports taking place. Not really. Yeah, so um, so ideally um, having some prior knowledge either through doing GCSE or core PE would be preferable. Um, there is an external pra practical element, um, an, an assessment, sorry, with the A-level. Um, so that's something they'd need to bear in mind if you, if you were looking at the A-level route. So that um, sport can be of your choice, providing it's on the um, A-level syllabus. Um, but preferably, um, yes, you know, you need to have a sport at least that you are um, confident in, in taking part in that you can be um, assessed for. OK, great, thank you. Um, someone said um, some college BTEC sport courses have exams, does yours? No, our course is all coursework based. Um, the course, the coursework is a different variety of coursework, but all of it, um, there is no exams at all. Um, and the, obviously the positive for that is some people don't like exams um, and also you, you know the grade that you're working at. So you'll be given the grade for each assignment that you do for each unit throughout the year. Um, so at the moment, so for example, our first years at the moment have got the grade that they've um, achieved the end of the first year. So they now know what they need to do in order to um, either get their grade up if they want to going through to the second year or if they're working on track as they are. Um, but yeah, the coursework is assessed throughout and, it, and it's all coursework based. OK, great stuff. A uh, quick question about the, the coaching course, the level one course. Um, they've asked, is it just football or is it other sports? 
No, so the coaching course is run by Shrewsbury Football. However, there are half of it is is football led, and the other half is um, is is a variety of sports. So it's sport at sport activators. So some examples of different sports that is incorporated within that is dodgeball um, and basketball. So some just sort of more multi sports that that we offer throughout that, but it's not wholly football. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Um, one last question. Someone's asked, uh, what are the BTEC assignments like? Okay, so the BTEC assignments, there's a variety of ways that we do the assignments. So um, we have written reports, we have presentations that are done individually. So that might be presenting your um, presentation either to us or actually just doing the format on a presentation format itself. Um, there are also um, sort of small group activities that we might do. For example, with nutrition, you might do a six weeks nutrition plan. Um, for fitness testing, you might do a 12 week fitness test, um, a fitness plan that you would put forward for somebody. So the format will actually be the fitness um, plan itself. So there's quite a few different ways that we we do the course that we try and mix it up so that it doesn't get too boring just doing written reports all the time um, and also some everyone learns in different ways so we try and make sure that um, the coursework is um, fits everybody and that everyone can and have their sort of area that they'd have their preferred way to um, to present it. OK, brilliant. Makes sense. Okay. OK, uh, Lou, if I can bring you in next, got some questions about level two business come through. OK. Uh, so someone's asked, is there a lot covered in the level two business which would be repeated in the level three? Um, not exactly repeated. Uh, there's a lot covered in the level two, which gives you sort of an oversight of how business works. What are the fundamental um, practices to follow and how to make money and be successful? And then Sarah can sort of um, um, follow on from me, actually, by saying that the level three goes a lot deeper. It goes to sort of in more detail. We might sort of look at marketing and the obvious things like advertising and TV adverts and websites, whereas um, the level three would go into why the psychology behind why that works. So there's two different levels. We might touch on the same topics in places, but level three goes much deeper into the um, an analysis of it further. I think that's probably sums it up. OK, yeah, brilliant. Um, and someone's um, said, I'm not great at maths. Is this an issue for studying level two business? If I'm honest, it depends on how badly you say you're not good at it. Me personally, I'm not great at maths either. Um, lots of us aren't. And we don't do algebra, thank goodness. We don't do geometry and things like that. Uh, but we do finance and it's about money. It's about making money and profit and loss, which um, to sort of the normal sort of person, it's sort of what I classify as normal maths. And it's logical. It's how much money is coming into your wallet and how much you're spending. So even the students that have found maths difficult and some of them that come to level two have failed their maths GCSE, they still manage to do a good job and get a really good grade in the, in the finance exam because it's logical. That's level two. If they go forward to level three, then it becomes slightly more tricky because the finance exam at level three, like I said previously, is a lot more in depth and that's when they possibly might struggle. But for level two, because it's logical and because it's what we all do, spending money, saving money, what we do with it, what we've got left, it can be a lot easier than you think. Brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah, I suppose there's not so many uh, calculating areas of triangles and things like that to contend with. Not at all. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's all logical about profit and what we can spend our money on and how we can go on holiday and what we've got left after we've paid all our employees. So it's, it's a lot more logical. Brilliant. OK, uh, Sarah, if I bring you in next, then uh, just some questions about uh, level three courses. Yeah. So someone has asked, how many days a week would I be in college if I did the BTEC? OK, so it really would depend on what size BTEC qualification you wanted to do. If if a student decided that they wanted to specialise in business and choose 
the level three BTEC and do just that, they would be in three days a week. At the moment, first years are in um, Mondays, Thursdays and Fridays. However, there is a bit of flexibility for students who want to study the BTEC business. Perhaps they like the practical element of it, um, fewer exams in that particular area. You have got the option of choosing to do a smaller qualification for BTEC business alongside two other A-levels, in which case it probably wouldn't be condensed down into three full days. It might be split a little bit more over three or four days. So it just depends. OK, makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Um, someone's asked, can I study BTEC alongside other A-level subjects? Yes, so that's something that we're um, looking to offer from September. So that, like I said just before, you could consider doing the smaller BTEC qualification at level three business alongside other subjects. So, for example, we've got people that are really interested in the kind of creative side. Perhaps they want to take something like graphics. They want to perhaps look at maybe even becoming a graphic designer and having their own business and therefore having a, a business qualification alongside it is something they could do. So you, you have got the option to do BTEC with other subjects or you could specialise and just do BTEC business on its own. Yeah, OK, no, that sounds really good. Um, again, someone else has asked, is there much maths involved at level three? Um, yes, is the answer. Um, a bit like Lou said, it, it does differ between the qualifications. So if you were to do the BTEC level three business qualification, the maths is really confined to the finance unit only, which is just like Louise was saying, it's it's, you know, profit, sales, logical maths, essentially. And at level three, that's only required for one unit and one exam um, and a little bit in year two. However, the A-level business has a lot of numeracy just kind of dotted throughout the two year course. There's a lot of formulas to remember. I mean, it's only multiplication, division, that kind of maths, but it is a lot, a lot of sums to remember to be able to calculate things, not just finance, things like how much market share has the business got, how productive are your staff being. Um, but once once students can remember the formulas that they use, it's quite accessible. OK, brilliant. Um, so, someone's asked uh, quite a broad question of just how is level three BTEC in business and the A level different? Yeah, OK, so the biggest difference I would say is the type of learning and the type of assessment. So although a lot of the subject areas are quite similar, the A level is super theoretical. We don't do um, many practical tasks where we get to actually put business ideas into practice. It's very, um, it's based around theories of how the business could do things and what strategies might work. It's very heavy when it comes to that. Whereas the BTEC side of things, we don't have to go into as much depth in certain areas and it allows us the time to put things into practice. So we get to actually be a bit creative. We get to do some um, events management. Like I said in the, the video, we get to do interview mocks and things like that. Um, and then the other massive difference is that the A-level business is 100% exams. It requires a lot of revision. It requires a lot of preparation in terms of having no idea what might come up and also how to address the questions. Whereas BTEC, there are only two exams in each year and they are only based on one module each. So for people that are less um, confident with exams, the BTEC option is definitely the more accessible one to be able to tackle one exam at a time. OK, brilliant. That makes perfect sense. Thank you very much. Uh, so yes. that's, that's all the questions we've had come through. Um, I'll just give it a couple of seconds just to see if anyone else has got a question to come through. Um, so this session is being recorded. So if you if you're watching the recording and you think, oh, they didn't ask the question that I wanted to be asked, uh, you can contact us through the website. You can contact us through social media channels and we can direct your questions to the tutors. That's not a problem at all. Um, we're always happy to answer any questions you may have. 
Um, but as as we're slightly over the time and there's no questions coming through, uh, we'll wrap that up there. Uh, this will be on the college YouTube account shortly, so you can watch back again if you wish to. Uh, as I say, any further questions, please get in touch. And we hope to see you at one of the other uh, webinars shortly. Thank you.